Hello, good morning everybody. In this video we are going to make a character selector. After the video you will be able to choose a texture and a name for your character. In the menu scene add a new window dialog node. Set the title to character selector or something like that. This node will contain the options to customize our character. Add a VBOX container as a child of the window dialog. Add some margin to leave some space between the nodes we will add and the borders. Let's start making a character texture selector. To change characters, I will use the arrow image from the Kenny input prompts asset pack. I will put a link in the description. To represent the characters, I picked the first idle flame of each character and I increased the size. You can download the images from the GitHub repository. Add a hbox container. Inside it, add a texture rect with the icon of the first character. We will change this texture to show the selected character. To change the character, add two texture buttons. Name them left button and right button. To center them, Check Expand and change the Stretch Mode to Keep Centered. In the left button, check Flip Page 2 to make it face the left. To center the characters and the buttons, set the Alignment property of the HBox container to center. Put some minimum size for the X axis to make the buttons have some clickable area. Now, Create a script for the character selector node. Define a constant called num characters that stores the number of available characters, four in my case. Also, create an unready variable for the text rect that shows the selected character. Create an integral variable called character index with a default value of zero. Add a setter to the variable and add the setter function. Inside it, check if his new value is less than zero. If so, change character index to the number of characters minus one, since the indexes go from zero to the number of characters minus one. If the new index is equal or greater than the number of characters, change character index to zero. Otherwise, just set character index with the new value. All this code makes the selected character move in a cycle. If we try to move to the character in the right of the last one, the first character will appear. And if we try to move to the character in the left of the first one, we will go to the last one. Finally, set the texture of the texture rect with the corresponding character image. All my character icons start with character and end with their index. So I can use the character index variable to select the correct one. But how do we change the selected character? That's easy. Connect the preset signals of both buttons, the left button and the right button. When the left button is preset, the creas character index by one. And when the right button is preset, increase it by one. Don't forget to use self to reference the character index variable. Otherwise, the setter won't be called. Connect the about to show signal of the window dialog. Inside the function, change the value of character index to the value in the my info dictionary. This way, when we open the character selector, the default value in the my info dictionary will determine the character that will show up. Also, connect the pop-up height signal. When we close the window, change the character index of the my info dictionary to the value contained in the character index variable. This way, the selected character will be saved when we close the window. 
To open the character selector, add a new button in the vertical container where the other buttons are. Change his text to something like character selector. Connect his preset signal to the menu script. Before implementing the function, create an already variable for the character selector node. Back at the function, connected to the preset signal, call the popup centered function of the character selector. This way, when the button is pressed, the window with the character selector will appear at the center of the screen. Let's try it. If you open the character selector, you can switch the character pressing the arrow buttons. But if we play the game, we see the initial character, not the selected one. That's because, if you remember, we are ignoring the character index parameter we pass in the characters initialize function. Go to the function in the base character script and let's finish it. Calculate the acting pixels of a character. We can get the act of the texture with the getAct function. The texture has four characters. To get the act of a character, we have to divide the total act by four. We get a warning because we are trying to divide two integers and we will lose the decimal part. To fix it, just add dot zero after the four. So it will be treated as a float. Now we have to change the region rect of the sprite to use only the part of the texture with the selected character. Region rect is of rect2 type, so we have to use a rect2 to set the value. In the first argument, put a zero, since we want to start always at the zero position of the x-axis. The second argument is the eye point where the texture will start. Multiply the act of a character by the character index and we will get it. The third argument is the width of the texture. Since the sprite sheet contains one character per row, use all the width of the sprite sheet. Finally, the fourth argument indicates the act of the zone of the texture we want to use. We already calculated it. It's the character act variable. With this, the sprite will only use the sprite sheet row of the selected character. Let's try it again. I open it to clients and I selected a different character for each one. If we start the game, the characters are correct now. Each one of the players has the character he selected. It's a little boring if all the characters have the same name. Let's make the players able to modify their name too. To be able to type the name, add a line edit node as a child of the vertical container of the character selector. We can define a max length to limit the number of characters the player can enter. I am going to set the maximum to 12 characters. Now, go to the character selector script and create a new already variable for the line edit we just added. When the character selector is opened, change text of the line edit to the text in the name of my info dictionary. When we close the character selector, update the name of the my info dictionary with the value in the line edit. It's the same we did with the character index. This makes the name in the my info dictionary and the line edit keep synced. Before trying it, let's change the font to make the UI a little more beautiful. Add a new theme in the menu node, the root node. Change the default font of the theme to the one you prefer. All the children node inherit this theme, so all the UI will use the, this font from now on. I open it for clients to test it. I selected a different character for each one. I also changed their name. 
we can see that because I put character limit of 12 characters, I can type the last letter of Sasaki Kojiro. The character names appear in the player list when we join a room. And when we play the game, they appear on top of their character. That's pretty much all I wanted to make in this series. But before ending, I would like to add some error messages when a client tries to connect to a non-existent room or a room whose game already started. So, see you in the next video.